Good afternoon. I just want to uh, take a few minutes to bring you up to date on what's happening. Uh, air actions are underway. There's not much I can say about the details of those actions now, but um, they are ongoing. The uh, United States is uh, sending some uh, new assets into the theater as part of the NATO plan to augment the Air Force. Uh, in that regard, we um, have deployed, Secretary Cohen today signed an order to deploy uh, five B-1B Lancer bombers to Europe from Ellsworth Air Force Base in South Dakota. And we are also in the process of sending uh, five additional EA-6Bs uh, to uh, the theater to uh, help with the uh, defense suppression at which they're so good. Um, there will be additional tankers going as well, probably about uh, 10 additional tankers. In addition, um, uh, yesterday we sent over um, four uh, additional uh, B-52s. Uh, that's a temporary augmentation because they will, uh, they flew over on a resupply mission and uh, ultimately they or others will come back, so we'll stay at a steady state of around eight B-52s, but there's been a temporary augmentation at uh, Royal um, Air Force Base uh, Fairford. Uh, with those uh, announcements, I'll take your questions. Ken, where are the B-1s going to be uh, based? Um, I don't have anything for you on that, but uh, by tomorrow I'll probably have, uh, have something. Yes? Do you know what caused the F-117 to go down? Um, we do not. And uh, we have not completed the investigation on that yet. Um, it, uh, I don't know when it will be completed. It's not just a, a simple issue of determining what happened. Uh, it's an issue of determining how it happened. So if the determination were to be uh, that it uh, was in fact shot down by an SA-3 or any other surface-to-air missile, the next question is, how did that happen? And what does it mean for the future operations? It's uh, precisely because of that reason, because it's very operationally sensitive, obviously, um, that uh, one, we want to be very careful in pulling together as much information as, as we can about uh, how it happened. And uh, two, um, I, I must tell you that there's a chance that even when we complete this, we won't talk about it for precisely the reason that I've given you. Can, can yes. I follow up question, please? Uh, we had been told uh, within this building by, uh, as we say, usually reliable sources that the F-117 probably was brought down by an SA-3. Um, and yet, uh, your concern about the technology, we're told the F-117s are still <coughs> flying missions and have been unabated. Uh, I'd like to know if that's true. And two, uh, when reporters were taken by the Serbs out to the wreckage, some notice what appeared to be bullet holes in what appeared to be the top of the wing. Uh, can you in any way uh, give us any kind of guidance on that? I cannot. What about all the operational still and have been? They uh, are still an integral part of uh, Operation Allied Force. Um, they are flying uh, as appropriate. Um, uh, and this reinforces the fact that this is an extraordinary aircraft. And it has performed brilliantly. Uh, over Iraq, and it's performing brilliantly today over Yugoslavia. And we obviously will make every reasonable effort uh, to protect the planes and the pilots, but that applies not only to F-117s, it applies to every plane in the inventory we're under use today. Bill. Ken, you know, uh, the Secretary addressed the technology loss issue yesterday, but uh, is the Pentagon concerned now that the loss of this aircraft could lead to more effective countermeasures against it in the future? Well, we're, we're always concerned. We have a, a galaxy of concerns every time a plane goes down. And obviously, the first concern is the safety of the pilot. And we address that concern, or our, our uh, combat search and rescue team addressed that concern brilliantly on Saturday. Um, we obviously have concerns about uh, vulnerability. And it tra that term transcends just technology. 
It applies to flight tactics, it applies to routes, it applies to a whole variety of things. And these are all among the issues that have to be determined in deciding, figuring out exactly uh, why a plane goes down. As a result of that, though, have you altered any of the, uh, the operating methods for this aircraft? Well, if we had, this would not be the place to discuss it. Is the pilot returning yes. to flying duty? Andrea. Okay, can you comment on the reports today that A-10s took off? Could you just confirm that this was the first day that A-10s have been involved in action? And, and a second question is, there's been a lot of complaints that there's not been a lot of information forthcoming from here. Um, from yourself, and that we'll, uh, most of the information we're getting is from Serb TV. Do you think that it's really good for us to get most of our information from the Serbs? Well, uh, I don't know whether you would call it information or misinformation. Yeah. Um, I, I try to give you uh, information such as it is and not misinformation. I think the Serbs frequently concentrate on misinformation, and you're free to do with that, with what, do with that what you will. Um, in terms of A-10s, look, we have planes taking off and landing at airports all over the world all the time. And it's not good for me or for the pilots to get into the business of, uh, of uh, telling you uh, what planes are involved and what operations when. The Serbs monitor TV very closely. We know that for a fact. Um, they are very aware of reports on TV of when planes take off from where, and they are trying to use that information to make various uh, 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 defensive calculations. I think that's clear. Um, we don't have to make it easier for them uh, to talk about um, what planes might be doing once they take off. Is the pilot of yes, the Mark. returning to Mark. flying missions? Mark, I'll get to you in a minute. The assertion that the uh, air defenses are being degraded, <clears throat> why do we need to send additional EA-6Bs? Um, first of all, the degradation of air defenses involves a number of, uh, of elements. It involves uh, outright destruction of air defenses, of radars and uh, missile installations, as well as the communication nervous system that links them together. It involves uh, the suppression of air defenses through electronic means, and it also involves flight tactics. And to talk about um, uh, uh, suppression of air defenses, you really have to consider all three things. Uh, it is clear that, um, that uh, suppression has been a very important part of this mission, and it is one that we want to continue, and uh, in some places augment. Does it suggest, though, that uh, suppression is increasingly important because <coughs> ratification is not happening at the pace which you expected it to happen? I don't think that um, uh, it pays to get into questions of expectations here. The issue is whether we are able to achieve uh, tactical air maneuverability at acceptable risk. And I think we've shown that we're able to do that, but it requires constant effort. And the air defense threat is changing all the time. And uh, therefore, we have to change our methods all the time. And we're doing that. This is not a static situation. Do yes, you John. B-1 bomber, what kind of uh, weapons capabilities are going to bring in? And uh, since the last time it was used, it was for area bombing. Does that suggest something about uh, a change in the desire to avoid collateral damage, that potential area? bombing weapon is being brought into the theater? Well, I think you saw pictures of the uh, uh, B-1 uh, bombs dropped during Desert Fox on a uh, barracks facility, as I recall, where they laid down a line of bombs quite accurately on a series of barracks. Uh, they have a, a very uh, precise uh, uh, bomb drop capability although technically they drop what are called uh, gravity bombs, dumb bombs. They are not precision-guided munitions, but they have a system that allows the drops to be very precise. Uh, they carry a load of, um, of up to 800, uh, uh, I'm sorry, up to 84 uh, Mark 82 uh, conventional 500-pound bombs, and they can also carry as well, in addition to that, uh, 30 uh, anti-armor uh, or artillery cluster bomb unit munitions. So I think you can imagine uh, when we get into talking about anti-armor, anti-artillery, some of the possible uses 
that the B1 could be put to. I yeah, that's 20 tons just for the arithmetic. Okay. No, you're a whiz. Uh, no, I have, I have Thanks. A two-part two question, please. Has the pilot of the F-117 returned to flying missions or will he soon? And two, uh, Sir David this morning said that the uh, airstrikes are now 24 hours a day, day and night. Are we flying daylight missions now? Well, there have been daylight strikes, certainly. And um, we have said from the very beginning that we reserve the right to strike at any time uh, in any way. And we, uh, I think, have demonstrated that right. Has the pilot yeah. returned or will he return to flight? I don't missions? know whether he's returned to flight yet, but that's certainly his desire to return as quickly as possible to flying status. The Sorry, Brit, yeah. The Brits said uh, that they've only dropped you know, two or three or so laser guide bombs during this campaign, largely because of weather. Can you give us some sense of how many of the manned aircraft sorties have been weathered out? Um, I'm afraid I cannot do that uh, uh, because I don't know. But weather uh, right now is, in fact, a factor. Um, we, of course, have uh, all weather capability in a number of respects. One is the, uh, the JDAMs being dropped by the B-2 bombers. The second are the CALCOMs being launched by the B-52s, and the third are the Tomahawk Sea Launch Cruise Missiles, the TLAMs, uh, coming from our, our fleet in the Adriatic um, and elsewhere. So we can surmount some of the weather problems. Uh, but clearly, as we said from the beginning, there are three very uh, real challenges to uh, fighting in this environment. One is weather, one is air defenses, and one is terrain. Well, has this slowed your ability to uh, prosecute your target set? And so to what extent? Uh, bad weather uh, will slow our ability, but as I say, we do have some all weather capability, and we just uh, try to shift the emphasis to that where possible. And are all the. Yeah. All the uh, I just said, Brian. Uh, two questions. First, can you give us some sense of what percentage of the targets that you have hit or tried to hit that you have, in fact, hit? You obviously have had a couple days at least to go back and look at some BDA from the first couple nights can give us at least a percentage of the accuracy. And the second question is, can you tell us whether or not any tank formations or Serb forces within Kosovo have yet been struck? Any confirmed hits? Um, we are beginning to turn uh, to hitting staging areas. Um, uh, there have been reports of NATO attacks against a, uh, a vehicle column uh, within Kosovo. Uh, I can't give you bomb damage assessment on that. It wasn't done by our planes. I, and to answer your first question, I cannot give you percentage figures at this stage. Yeah, yes, Dan. When you said that um, one of the goals of this operation was to diminish and deter um, Serb forces, can you say, are you making progress in that regard, and if so, what the evidence <clears throat> is? Um, certainly, we are uh, making progress against uh, military infrastructure, and we are reducing the Yugoslav ability to uh, sustain operations. Uh, but the impact of choking off supply lines and eliminating uh, ammo facilities and fuel supplies, of course, is, uh, is a delayed impact. And uh, it may take some time to see that, but we are making progress in, in, uh, in choking off the ability to operate. Can yes? The other week you said uh, you saw some initial evidence of uh, Milosevic pulling uh, Saddam Hussein and putting uh, critical assets that he wants to save in urban civilian type areas. Have you seen any more of that? Has that increased a bit as we've gone into phase two? Uh, there are signs of uh, doing things like uh, transporting uh, refugees in military vehicles and uh, taking other, uh, other steps that would uh, make attacks more complicated. Yes. There yes, Tom. Uh, Shape said this morning that they've attacked the, the Serbs 243rd Combat Group. Uh, can you say anything about, in addition to that, about special police units that have been? Well, there? we have attacked. Um, uh, we have attacked um, special uh, uh, police and army barracks in Pristina, uh, Pristin, 
Mitrovica. Um, Jurosevic, Djokovica, and several other. No, you can find them on a map. I can spell them. But we have we have attacked we have attacked uh, uh, barracks and headquarters facilities in uh, in um, in a number of places in and around Kosovo. The chairman showed uh, some uh, uh, imagery yesterday of an attack on some facilities in Nice, NIS. Uh, that uh, supported operations in Kosovo, and we are doing this. But uh, this is not attacking individual tanks and artillery. That's going to take more time and better weather than we have right now. Any formations? Any of those been hit? Well, we are uh, increasingly uh, going after staging areas, and uh, we would anticipate that there'll be troops in those. Themselves. Well, we don't actually have in Kosovo, as I think you can appreciate, um, divisions of soldiers uh, marching or driving down roads. Uh, the troops and the special police are widely dispersed throughout the area. They're operating in small groups. Uh, they're attacking villages from different directions in small groups, so there aren't huge concentrations of troops um, in the sense of massed armies that, uh, that, that we encountered, say, in World War II in, in uh, battles 50 or 60 years ago. Um, it's a much different situation. It's more like small groups uh, trying to either uh, uh, destroy and pillage villages on the one hand, or small groups going after um, uh, concentrations of the Kosovar Liberation Army. Uh, so uh, that is is a, is a complicating factor. And do you see there's a race against time to some degree that, that by the time you, know, you get a chance to do the things you need to do militarily, I mean, there, there'll be few if anybody left alive in Kosovo? Well, I don't know whether I'd call it a race against time. From the very beginning, it's been a race against Milosevic, who was the person responsible for this. Um, from the very beginning, uh, uh, we've realized that that was the problem. Last year, there were 2,000 people killed in uh, Kosovo, and uh, uh, more than 250,000 people uh, displaced from their homes. Uh, uh, many of them were able to come back to their homes after the October agreement. But uh, shortly, uh, uh, within several months after the October agreement, the pace of violence picked up again. There was the Ratchak massacre in January, as you recall. There were other massacres in January. And uh, even before the uh, Rambouillet talks uh, recessed, uh, uh, Milosevic began stationing more tanks and troops either in or close to Kosovo, and he began a, uh, a series of, uh, of, of attacks the day after the talks were suspended. Um, there were reports, and they were widely reported, probably at the AP and elsewhere, um, of, of, of soldiers in white uh, snowsuits and black masks attacking uh, Albanians in the village of Srebica and uh, other places as well. There were summary uh, executions. So there's no no doubt as to where the uh, uh, where the responsibility for these attacks lie, and it is as a race against Milosevic's murderous ways. Can you yes, that, um, we understand you have no plans now for the usage of ground troops. Are there any circumstances we might consider the usage? I mean, the bombardment while it might have some successes against. Um, Milosevic forces, it has led to a great number of people being driven out or escaping from Kosovo. Uh, there might not be any Kosovarians left by the time you finish in 30 days or three weeks or four weeks. Are there any circumstances that might lead you to consider use of uh, ground troops? As the President said, we have no intention of using ground troops except um, after the signing of a peacekeeping agreement. But on the question of ground troops, just let me say, there is no uh, uh, magic military bullet here. Uh, we could not, uh, even if a decision by Na some NATO countries uh, was made to deploy ground troops uh, from parts of Europe uh, into Kosovo 
it would take a long while. They would not be there tomorrow. It would probably be a matter of weeks or more than a month before these troops were on the ground in Kosovo doing a job. What you have to remember is this is a very heavily defended area. There are now 40,000 uh, Yugoslav army troops with over 400 tanks, over 300 armored personnel carriers, and over 400 artillery pieces either massed in Kosovo or nearby Kosovo. There are heavy concentrations of artillery along the border between Kosovo and Macedonia. There are only 14 roads into Kosovo, two from Macedonia. These roads are mined. The bridges are mined. Um, there are uh, built-in, uh, as I said, uh, a tank and artillery positions along lines of communication. Uh, no one would uh, mount a light attack against this. It would have to be an extremely hev heavy and determined attack. It would take time to organize such an attack. So there is no magic military bullet. There is not a quick solution. The quickest solution and the most acceptable solution is for Milosevic to stop his murdering today. And that would end the problem. That would end the refugee flow. It would allow people to come back to their, their homes, even if they're burned out, and start rebuilding their lives. Yeah, yes? You're portraying this as something that would be a surprise. And you have said previously that the military, that NATO, has actually done contingency planning for everything, including ground troops. So why would it take two or three weeks if the plans are already on the table? Granted, you don't intend to use them, but they're there. First of all, Dan, I have never said that NATO did contingency planning for the use of ground troops. I have never used that word about ground troops. Um, and I don't believe... You said they plan for all contingencies. In what what I that have that said story. is, and we discussed this yesterday at considerable length, mm -hmm. um, what I have said is that, uh, that NATO looked at a number of possible uh, options for the use of force last fall. And these options raise from, uh, range from putting forces on the border between Albania and Kosovo on the one hand and Macedonia and Kosovo on the other, but mainly Albania and Kosovo on the one hand, to putting a, uh, that's sort of the low end, to putting in a peacekeeping force to uh, what it would take if, if there were uh, to be an invasion. And this is similar to what any news organiz organization might do in deciding how to cover a campaign. Um, whether you assign a dozen people to cover a campaign, or six people, or one person. What's it going to take in terms of money? What's it going to take in terms of support? That's what NATO looked at. It was not planning for contingencies. It was merely trying to get a sense of what uh, resource demands would be um, in the event of various outcomes. There was no support within NATO for a massive uh, ground operation. It was determined it would take 200,000 troops to um, uh, invade and occupy Kosovo. It was never a contingency plan. It was done in the context of looking at what various outcomes might require in terms of resources. Yes, Pat. I think that was a good explanation for newspaper bean counters. But uh, are we putting in a lot more air resources? I thought you told us a week ago we had 350, 400 aircraft, more than enough to do the job. Now we've got more B-2s, B-1s. The British are sending in more, uh, more planes. And is that carrier? Uh, we have a carrier en route to the area with a carrier wing as well? Well, we do have the Theodore Roosevelt en route to the area, but its ultimate destination is the Gulf. And whether or not the, uh, uh, the TR uh, just transports through the MED or spends a couple of days there hasn't been determined, but I don't think there's been any decision to use uh, the Theodore Roosevelt battle group in this contingency now. What about the other uh, planes? It sounds like you're really building up well, for a mom uh, increase we, in momentum. We, we did, as I think we uh, showed and have shown consistently, have enough uh, airplanes there to do uh, the uh, initial uh, strikes called for in the NATO plan. The NATO plan has always been called a phased air option, and it always uh, assumed that there would be an augmentation of strikes as the program went along. And now we're in, we've moved from the early phases to um, uh, the middle phase, and that requires more air. So. The NATO allies have agreed, as was announced over the weekend, first by the British, but then also at uh, NATO headquarters, 
to put more uh, planes in, and we're in the process of doing that. Well, you mentioned that uh, earlier you talked about the weather was impeding going after individual tanks and pieces of artillery, and then you rattle off a number of statistics of tanks and armor. Excuse me a sec. Excuse me. Who's doing the talking here? Excuse me. Are you on a telephone someplace? Could we stop that? Thanks. Uh, sorry, go ahead. I couldn't hear your question, and I felt I should concentrate totally on your question. You mentioned earlier that weather was impeding going after individual tanks and pieces of artillery, and then you rattled off a number of 300 tanks, 300 APCs, 400 pieces of artillery in Kosovo. Over the next week, will the campaign gradually concentrate on that cat and mouse game of cat tank busting quite discreetly? I don't want to get into, uh, into specifics like that. Our goal from the very beginning has been to degrade the forces in Kosovo that are being used to, uh, uh, to uh, throw people out of their homes and to uh, basically impose uh, a reign of terror and death in Kosovo. And that's what we will attempt to do. Um, we've started first with the infrastructure and the supply lines, and we will move as quickly as, as, quickly as we can to, uh, to actual forces. The problem is that um, uh, although we are going to uh, hit increasingly staging areas where we find them, as I tried to indicate, there aren't large concentrations of troops at this stage. There are things we can do and will do, um, uh, and the, this, we will do them as soon as weather permits. But Technology follow -up. You've got J-STARS over there and the Predator drone at some point. Will those help peer through the clouds and help target, uh, give targets to NATO pilots? Well, the Predator is now um, ready to go. Um, it was weathered out yesterday. Um, there will be a couple of days of training, and then the Predator will be on the case um, is, if the weather permits. We are also uh, send in the process of sending eight uh, Hunter uh, UAVs um, over uh, to the theater to uh, operate to give us more um, uh, unmanned surveillance. And, uh, yes. What about the U.S. troops in Bosnia? I mean, is, you know, there have been some threats against them. Is there anything recent that happened on that front? And are you planning, are you all planning to do anything different in terms of? Well, we've already uh, taken a number of steps to improve uh, force protection uh, in Bosnia. Um, it's always been at a high level. The commander has the right to uh, do whatever he thinks is necessary to meet uh, the current threat of the day, and we've done that. We've shown that we do have a very alert and aggressive air caps flying over um, Bosnia, and those, of course, will continue. Okay. Yes? Thanks. Two simple questions. Was the F-117 tracked on radar, and is the B-1 going to be dropping my favorite in our arsenal of death, the sensor-fused weapon? <laughs> um, the first, uh, the answer to the first question is those are uh, all the types of uh, uh, questions that will be answered in the course of the report. Uh, and the answer to the second question is I don't know. Ken? Yes. Uh, when, can, when do you, when do you uh, uh, estimate the B-1s will be on the ground ready to fly sorties over there? And second question is, what, things like the, the B-1s, uh, the uh, Predators, uh, and now the Hunters, why, why were these um, not put in place earlier, you know, given the, given the weeks of planning that went into this? The B-1s should be flying by the end of this week, probably before the end of this week. And in terms of uh, uh, your second question, I'm not sure I can answer that, except uh, I, beyond what I said earlier that uh, when we started this, uh, we had what we needed to do uh, the job that NATO had called for. That job has changed, so we are augmenting the, uh, the assets available to do that. Well, with regard to UAVs, for instance, uh, it's, it's, does it, they, the fact that they, have not, they weren't in place in, in the beginning suggests it was not foreseen that it would be this difficult to get the information about what's happening there. No, I don't think that's it at all. Uh, the Predator generally has been, in fact, every year uh, has been used uh, aggressively in Bosnia except during the winter. Uh, the, uh, the, the, the Predator, and uh, I suspect the Hunter as well, as, although I don't know, um, uh, can be susceptible to uh, icing in the winter, which makes it impossible to fly. So the Predator has not flown in Bosnia during the winter. 
the weather is pretty much the same, maybe even worse in Kosovo. So there are times during the year when they can't fly. We're now on the, uh, the cusp of spring. Things are warming up, although as you can see from television reports, there's been snow over there recently. And uh, they believe that the weather is reaching the time when they can fly. Sir, can, uh, can yeah. you? Uh, both Macedonia and uh, Albania are getting very nervous over uh, the situation in, in Kosovo. And I believe Macedonia has asked for NATO guarantees to defend it. Uh, are we doing anything about that, possibly putting uh, token troops into Albania uh, as a show of our, our support for it? Well, first of all, um, as you know, there are already about 10,000 NATO troops in Macedonia, and clearly we would consider any attack against Macedonia atta an attack against NATO troops and uh, would respond appropriately. Um, Secretary Cohen has been in touch with uh, his counterparts in, in uh, Albania and Macedonia. We're very aware of their concerns, and we are addressing them. Yes, Brian. Uh, to follow up on Tony's question, can you talk about joint stars? Are there any over there in Europe, and are they participating? And the second question is, any thought um, about bringing in some Apaches for that tank busting phase? Um, Apaches certainly are an option, and it's one we're considering. Uh, joint stars, I, I said, um, uh, is, uh, is over there. I can't say too much more about it. Is it participating, though? I know there are yes, it is. Okay. Yes. Ken, uh, two questions. Uh, could you estimate the percentage of uh, missions being flown against targets in and around Kosovo? And the second question is, could you discuss, uh, there's a report on the wires of a uh, possible cooperation between Iraqi and Yugoslav air defense uh, uh, officers uh, in sharing intelligence information, maybe even spare parts? Um, first of all, percentage of targets in Kosovo, um, as I said earlier, has uh, started out at about 20 percent and has risen uh, uh, to as high as 50 percent on any given day. It varies, of course, from day to day, uh, depending on the weather, uh, depending on, on uh, uh, commander's uh, targeting choices, et cetera but it has ranged from 20% in the early stages to 50% uh, uh, in the current stage. Um, whether it'll stay at 50 every single day remains to be seen. Could drop back, could be higher in some days. Uh, the uh, second question was you asked about an, a recent AP story about uh, discussions between um, Iraqi and uh, Yugoslav officials. Um, I have that cited intelligence sources. I can't comment on intelligence, but uh, it certainly would not be surprising um, if they talk. These are two countries, both subject to uh, um, uh, attack by uh, uh, forces uh, uh, within NATO. Um, uh, they both have uh, primarily uh, Soviet-built uh, or uh, purchased air defense systems. And they are both subject to international embargoes, which limits their ability to purchase weapons and spare parts. So they might um, uh, obviously look for ways to work together to uh, uh, complement or supplement each other's uh, systems. In addition, I'm sure that the Yugoslavs believe that the, that the Iraqis have learned a thing or two um, over the last uh, seven years in, in dealing with Western aircraft. Uh, what they've learned is that they haven't been able to deal with them very successfully, and I hope they imparted that information to the Yugoslavs. Yes, yeah. Otto. Ken, there have been uh, very few reports from either here or, uh, or Brussels on the strikes on or, or SAMs being fired, and I've seen no reports of harm shooting or any strikes on the mobile ba SAM batteries. Are they still, hus the Serbs still putting <coughs> their their uh, SAMs and they're not using the radars enough that we can get de decent targets? Well, I know that uh, Air Commodore Wilby, the NATO briefer, has uh, mentioned on several occasions that uh, when SAMs have been used and several occasions when they haven't been used, um, they do not uh, fire SAMs every day. It seems to be episodic and the number they fire uh, varies. Um, we have, although we're not in the business and don't plan to get into the business of talking about specific ordnance expended on specific days, we have fired harms. Yes? Um, just a, uh, well, I guess I forgot my question. <laughs> oh, no, I'll come I, back I, to you. Right, weather, go ahead. If, if the inclement weather persists, <laughs> right. do we run the risk here of seeing a U.S.-only operation, given that 
the, uh, the cruise missiles and the GPS guided bombs are primarily the domain of the, of the U.S. Well, as you know, the, the HMS Splendid, a British submarine, um, has been participating uh, in the operation. Uh, weather uh, is not always uniformly bad, and sometimes there are pockets uh, of good weather that can be exploited. So uh, this will always be an Allied operation. Can yes, yes Thelma. Uh, is there any uh, problem with the supply of U.S. cruise missiles, for instance, there? I had seen a report that it was dropping down to 150 and that the Air Force might be considering converting nuclear cruise missiles to conventional because of the dwindling supply. There is no a problem with sea launch cruise missiles. Um, the uh, stocks of air launch cruise missiles um, are limited and it's something we're addressing. Is that a problem? Is that a concern? Well, I wouldn't say it's a problem right now, no. Paul? Is there a uh, risk if a lot of the roads into Kosovo are mined that the refugees are going to uh, walk across and be blown up at any point? I mean, well, um, these, of course, are Yugoslav mines that have been planted there, and that is a risk. Uh, my sense is that, uh, from what I've uh, read in the press, that uh, many of the bridges have been uh, set with explosive charges that can be manually detonated. And um, I suspect that many of the roads um, are mined with anti-tank mines that should allow of uh, civilians to cross over, but I haven't heard um, reports of mined roads preventing refugees from getting out. Are, are there, there any plans afoot to uh, start running flights from bases other than those in Italy as the weather gets better to take the pressure off of Aviano to a certain extent? Uh, I'm not aware that that's the, uh, that that's the plan right now. I, obviously, there are options, but um, we're using a variety of bases now in Europe, not all in Italy. And what yes. kind of uh, mil serve military activities? You touched on this earlier, but what kinds of things are you seeing in Kosovo? And do you have any estimates on the number of, number of Kosovar Albanians that have been killed since the bombing started? Uh, we do not have uh, good estimates of that. That's uh, very difficult for us to estimate uh, without people on the ground there uh, to verify that. Um, let me uh, just... Um, uh, give you one example of what's happening uh, in Kosovo. Uh, this is a uh, report uh, from um, uh, OSCE channels about a, a lawyer named Kelmendi, who was a prominent lawyer in Kosovo and uh, represented many Albanians accused of terrorism by the Yugoslav authorities. Um, his son, Kacho Kelmendi, who uh, worked for the um, uh, OSCE, the um, Organization for Security um, in Europe, the KBM monitors. He was he worked for them as a translator and and uh, uh, security person um, uh, when the KBM was in Kosovo. He um, would check in occasionally with his former supervisor, OSCE supervisor, and um, uh, called his supervisor uh, regularly up until March 25th. On March 26th, his uh, uncle, the uncle of Cacho Kelmendi, called the supervisor to say that um, he was in trouble, that he'd been taken in by the police, and um, uh, his fate was unknown. He called, uh, a friend called later in the day to say that, uh, that the lawyer, the Kelmendi, the Cacho's father, had also been taken custody by the police, said that the police had come to his house at night and uh, beaten uh, the attorney, Kelmendi, in front of his family. And after that, uh, the attorney, Kelmendi, his son, Cacho, and his, the brother of Kelmendi, the uncle, were taken away. And... Uh, uh, Cacho, when he was taken away, was told to kiss his wife and children goodbye because he would not see them again. Uh, they were taken out and uh, shot. And their bodies were found by the road and identified by Cacho Helmendi's wife. That's the type of activity that's taking place um, in Kosovo today. Yes? Yeah, uh, Eric Commander will be today mentioned that the 243rd uh, combat group was hit today. Or he, he left unsaid whether it was troops 
armor or the headquarters, he mentioned that they were responsible for some of the worst ethnic cleansing in southern Kosovo, kind of like what you're talking about. Can you give us a sense of what was hit among that group? I'm afraid I don't have uh, more details on that than what uh, the Air Commodore mentioned this morning. Thank I'll you. try to get some. Ken, you've said that um, there are about 40,000 troops in and around Kosovo. Can you tell whether any of the um, air campaign has stopped uh, either them coming into Kosovo or other troops coming down from the south? As I, uh, as I said, um, we think we have had an impact on uh, cutting their supply lines and making it more difficult to sustain them. Um, uh, it's hard to know whether the bombing attacks to date have uh, stopped the flow in. Uh, we do know that there has not been much of a flow into Kosovo over the last week or so. Uh, about half the troops, in terms of uh, people, are, are poised outside of Kosovo. And that uh, percentage has remained true for the last uh, week or so. There hasn't been a new movement of troops into Kosovo. Um, the other half, um, approximately uh, 16 to uh, uh, 20,000, 17 to 20,000 people are already in Kosovo. Those numbers haven't changed appreciably from what we can tell over the last several weeks. So it does appear that they're not moving new troops in. We are trying to attack uh, troops, their infrastructure, and where possible, their equipment, both in and near Kosovo. And can you tell whether they are still in the process of sending troops from the north to the south of the country as re um, reinforcements? I do not have any sense that the uh, troops uh, marshaled um, outside of Kosovo but near Kosovo has, has changed much in the last week. The numbers have remained pretty much. I'll just take this. Yeah. Um, Jamie Shea said this morning that the uh, air defense stuff has been provided to Macedonia. Is that AAA or something else? Um, I don't know exactly what, what is there. Um, there are uh, uh, British, French, German, and other European troops there, and I assume that they have their own air defense capability uh, that travels with them. And uh, I, that may be what he's talking about, but I don't have any details on that. Last question, Brian. On the Iraqi front? Yes, there, I don't believe there's been a, a violation of the no-fly zone since March 19th. Since March what? 19th. Yeah. What?